Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're going to take a look at the actual architecture or anatomy of our favorite financial tool, the credit card. You know, we have a ton of them. If you watch the show, maybe 15, 20 of them if you're super aggressive. But when you take a look at the card, other besides the card art, you know, what does all this stuff mean? There's a chip, there's a magnetic strip, there's a long number. How does it all work? What does it all have to do with getting my reward? So we're going to focus on that. Of course, come out on the other on other end of this with a better understanding of how our favorite financial product works. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. So again, we're going to take a look at a credit card, but of course, this, this works the exact same for debit cards as well, even though the rewards are basically different. They function the exact same, right? So you know, when you look at your card, you know, there's a lot of different logos on it. Some are newer added in the last few years some you know go back quite a ways right but what does it all mean so what we're going to do here is I found a, just a generic picture of a Chase. Yes, it's a Chase debit card online, but it's actually surprisingly hard to find a picture with all the information on the front of it to mark it up for, so it's easy to follow. But again, credit debit cards work the exact same way. So of course, we're going to use, you know, the, the old school, uh, well, it's old school, but you know, homemade infographic, if you will, right? Because a lot of this stuff is, you know, structurally integral to how credit cards and payments work. You know, we just don't really talk about it that much because the issuer just wants you to focus on using it. So with that, here you go. This is the Chase debit card that we're going to use. Again, just found on the internet. So you can see it here. This should very look very familiar. Again, it will work the exact same if this was a credit card. So some of this we already know how it works, so we're not going to spend that much time on it, right? So if you start off at number one at the top left here, issuer branding, right? They all put their name on it. You can see Chase with the Chase logo, and then there's another logo on the right side. Not too hard there. Now, if you drop down to number two here, that's a newer ad, right? Because that is the EMV chip. And really what they mean there is, you know, the EMV chip is it came in to add another layer of security over the magnetic strip that we'll talk about when we get to the back of the card. But basically the, the difference between an EMV card and a magnetic strip card is that the EMV card basically generates a unique code for each transaction that you do, whereas the magnetic strip does not. So, you know, basically this makes it harder for, you know, folks who steal your credit card information and counterfeit cards. So that's why you know, merchants and card issuers prefer the EMV transactions, even though they are more complicated than the magnetic strip sometimes. Now, we don't really need to get into the overcomplicatedness, but again, it's holding the same information except it's generating a unique one-time code. Now, if we keep going from the EMV chip to number three, number three is a newer, you know, last few years, newer, newer logo there. I mean, those lines basically look like the Wi-Fi symbol. That basically means it's, your card can be used for contactless payments, which it's, it's funny because it's not entirely contactless, but really you can tap your card on the payment system on um, POS, uh, uh, you know, machine basically, and it can complete the transaction that way. Uh, for whatever reason, card issuers really love it. I think because it's technically supposed to be quicker than the EMV chip, uh, but I, personally, it's not that quick to me, but it is a nice party trick when it first came out. Now, all the way on the bottom right here, you have number four. I guess I could have put these in better order, but again, you have credit or debit card, right? This is very simple. It just tells you if this is a credit or a debit card. Above that one, you have number five, which is the actual card number that we're going to break down in a little bit. Now, the bottom right, number six, you have the payment network. So that'll be Visa, MasterCard, Discover, or American Express. Uh, number seven there in the middle, you have the expiration date. So this you know, card was expired in like September of 2020. Number eight here, you have the cardholder name that is going to be you. And so those are basically, you know, the easiest ones. Now we jump to the, the rest of the time is going to be spent right here in the middle. And this is the card number. So this breaks down into a lot of different things. It's very interesting. So first part in, in red, number nine, major industry identifier. What this does is it can actually, this digit can actually identify which payment network the card belongs to, I guess just in case they forgot to put their, uh, their logo on it. But really, it's a fun party trick that you can impress people with. If you tell them, hey, Amex cards always begin with a three, Visa cards always begin with a four, MasterCards always begin with a five, and Discover always begins with a six. All right, so that's kind of how you can know. Now, realistically, you know, this information is also in the EMV chip or the magnetic stripe. So just because the Visa logo is on the card doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that the computer would be able to read the logo, right? So that's why it's in there like that. Now, it's also in your... Um, 
abbreviated as Major Industry Identifier, or MII. However, if you go to the purple box now, which includes the Major Industry Identifier, you get to the Issuer Identification Number, INN. And, you know, it's funny because some of these things, you know, end up having different abbreviations. But basically, this is in digits one through six. It's also called the Bank Identification Number, or BIN, B-I-N for short. And what this does is this identifies which credit card company issued the card. Because again, you know, there's a ton of branding on it, but the branding is just for you and me to see or for other people to see what cards you're using. The computer doesn't know what the, the, this is a chase card without the information being somewhere. So now when you move over to the green here, number 11, the account number, very simple. These digits here represent the account number. So when the, you know it rings back to Chase, basically they know which account number is associated to what card, and it all links together. Now the one here on the left, number 12, final check, that last digit there, that's kind of, to my understanding, that's kind of a, uh, a final check for the payment processor. Now, there's like a math trick involved with computers, so this just is an easy way for them to make sure they didn't miss anything. I'm not going to go too far into how this actually works, but suffice it to say that's kind of like for protection. Um, so overall, there you go. That is the front of the card, right? You can see, again, all that stuff does have a functional purpose, right? It's almost I'd break it out into two specific things. There's the branding and stuff like that for us and everyone else to see, and then there's the stuff that the actual computer has to read. So again, you remember the EMB chip or the magnetic strip. We're going to talk about the back of the card in a second. That's what's communicating the information to the point of sale system, and that's really what's relaying all the information. Of course, we have a full video on how payment processing works. I can link down below for you as well. Now, in researching this, I did come up with a neat party trick. I just found it. I'll put it on screen if you want to try it yourself before we move on to the back of the card. So, again, this is from WalletHub. And what WalletHub said is, you know, all legitimate credit card numbers are divisible by 10, but not obviously so. You can't simply divide your full 13 to 19 digit card number by 10 and expect this trick to work. You have to know the code. So, here's how it works. So, they're listing the code. So, double every other number starting with the first. Separate any double digit numbers that result into the sum of their parts, 14 becomes one and four. Calculate the sum of resulting numbers. Calculate the sum of the numbers that were not doubled, the odd digits in the card. Add the result to of step C to the result of step D and divide by 10. Now, I'm probably not going to try that. I thought about it, then I was like, I'm bad at math. I really want to do all that. But it's a neat party trick, so if you want to try to do that at home, let me know if you actually try and if it actually works. But just including it for a fun fact. So that was the front of the card. But now there's also the back of the card. And granted, cards have changed somewhat. A lot of issuers are going away from putting all the information on the front of the card so they have a nice, clean look and putting it all on the back, right? So we've tried to find an example. And funny enough, you know, those card numbers were basically embossed on the card because back in the day, you remember the old school credit card? It wasn't even a credit card machine where they basically take your card and kind of like run it through like a machine that basically makes a carbon copy on paper of it. That's why. But since we don't have to do that anymore, they're kind of getting away from that. So we're still going to take a look at the card. It's probably going to have mixed information, but again, it, it's still the same. For our purposes, it's still fine. So here's the back of the card. This is actually another Chase card. This is a Chase Disney card. Uh, they actually put Darth Vader on the front of this one, and it's a Star Wars theme, right? So you can see it playing right now. So if we flip it over, though, or add our infographics over to it, we can play the same game. Now, some of the stuff we did cover up front, so we're not really going to break down again. But number one on the left, you see account holder, right? That's you. Number two is the card number. Number three is expiration date. Again, we talked about all that stuff. Now, it gets somewhat more interesting if you go up to our number four on the right. Sorry, that's basically card art and more issuer branding. Um, again, not every card is going to have the Death Star on it, but they, they probably should, honestly. But anyways, moving on to the more serious stuff now, we have number five at the top, which is the magnetic stripe. And this is very similar to the EMV chip. It carries the same card information, except it doesn't generate the one-time code, right? Uh, so this, you know, it carries your card number, the account number, that whole deal, and you can still swipe it. Now, some places do still have you swipe the card because they haven't upgraded for whatever reason. There used to be a food court in one of the office buildings I worked in where they purposely didn't use the EMV chip because they were moving so many people they thought the magnetic stripe was quicker, so they didn't bother with it but you can still get the same results. Now, if you drop down to number six there, the hologram piece, you know, so that one, it's just, it's an added layer of security because it's really hard to fake that hologram. So they kind of put it on cards, not like the shiny Charizard from back in the day, but again, you get the point. Now, if you go from the number six to number seven, the signature box, 
Very few card, very few people actually have you sign the card or check the card for a signature anymore. But back in the day, you know, that was another way of proving, you know, the card was yours. You could sign it. They could match it up with your ID if they wanted to. Another layer of security, if you will. But again, it doesn't really happen too much today. Now you go from seven to eight above that. Of course, you have the customer service phone number. So if you want to call, there's something wrong with your card, you can call that phone number, talk directly to customer service, and hopefully they can take care of you. Now if you go all the way to the right on number nine, you have the um, CVV security code, card verification value. It's a three to four digits um, and adds an extra layer of security. I think Amex uses four that Amex actually puts theirs on the front. Everyone else seems to use three. But overall, there you go. That's the back of the card. Now, again, like I said, depending on which card you have, which design your issue is going with, you could have majority of the info on the front or the majority info on the back. It really doesn't matter. Personally, I guess I would prefer the info on the back. It's a cleaner look, but again, just more personal preference. It doesn't really matter to most people. But overall, there you go. You can see each part is kind of functional. And again, like I said, it's broken up between two parts. The parts of the computer, POS need, and the branding, you know, for marketing and stuff like that. But overall, I did think this was pretty fascinating, so I did want to share it. So, of course, if you guys found this interesting or at least fascinating, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we are talking about stuff just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Question for you guys is, let me know what you think about all this. Do you think cards would have advanced even further that we don't even need all this information anymore? Or do you think, you know, it's actually pretty impressive how they work to begin with? Love to hear your thoughts and what you expected, how this would go. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and talk to you very soon in the next one.